Welcome to the Art of Love podcast. My name is Tamar Gale, and I am here to guide you into deeper, more expansive love, freedom, and pleasure. A deep inner journey of self-discovery. Here, I will cover all types of topics pertaining to love, including self-love and self-care, relationships, tantra, intimacy, sex, all the way to Christ consciousness, and Pashamama, just to name a few broad topics. My mission is to support you in being true to yourself, reconnecting the fragmented pieces and aspects of yourself so that you can find and use your own inner fire, shakti power, and voice. It is time to break down the old systems that we have been taught to live by. I would love to see you align with your personal truth and nature instead of succumbing to others' views of how you should be trying to fit inside of the box in order to be accepted, and instead, standing in your power and loving all that you are, accessing a new way of being in the world. Welcome to The Art of Love, and today I'm with Hannah Bier. She helps ambitious women across the world heal deeply and create the successful love-filled and freedom-based lives that they desire. She uses energy clearings, family constellations, and masterful life and business strategy to help you bring your goals to fruition, with more ease than you would on your own. Hannah has worked with hundreds of women, helping them achieve new levels of success in their love-based businesses, fall in love with the perfect mate for them, as well as grow lighter and brighter and live more abundantly abundantly than ever before. Hannah, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy that you're here. And um, yeah, welcome to the- Thank you so much for having me. Can you share with us a little bit about how you got started, kind of what brought you onto this path of um, the work that you're doing in the world? What was just, yeah. I would love to tell you about that. So it really feels like I fell into my business. Um, I first got visions that I should be an entrepreneur and run my own company when I was studying fashion in university. So I was on my way to become a fashion person and I wanted to run this eco-friendly fashion company and I saw myself as a CEO in the future and then more and more my path kind of shifted Um, throughout my life I had been struggling with anxiety depression PTSD and all those things so as I was in university I was also trying to heal myself and I was doing a lot of research on the brain and the nervous system and how trauma affects you and I just really wanted to figure out if there was some kind of a cure for what I was going through because therapy hadn't helped until this point and I was really at a low point and so I thought to myself I just want to research and see if I can find something that would help me um from there my friends started saying what are you doing why are you changing so much you seem so happy What are you? And then I just got all these questions from people who asked me questions about their lives and how to fix themselves. And at the time, I sent them all away because obviously I told them, you need to see a mental health professional. I cannot help you with this. But then they kept coming back to me and they said, my therapist can't help me. And so really, I did not decide to start this business. It was more that people came up to me And I had clients before I even had a business. Um, And so from there, I kind of grew into it. And I realized that my entire life's path until that point had really prepared me to be a healer. And so from there, I started to really get my certifications and learn what it takes to really help people. Wow. Amazing. (laughs) So basically, your path was just given to you. Amazing. Totally. Wow. Um, <clears throat> I know that there's uh, anxiety and depression are huge um, in our society. There's so many people who are struggling with that. Um, was yours from school? Was it from everything that you had going on? Was it a reaction? If you don't mind sharing, was it from what you were doing in your life? Was it, sometimes it's hormonal. Like what was it that, that put you into that state of depression and anxiety? Mm -hmm. That's such a good question. As I was in it, I didn't know 
Mm. It just felt like I was in this dark room and I was trying to find the light switch so I could leave this room, but I didn't even know that there was a light switch and I had high hopes, but it's like, this is kind of what healing feels like for many people. Cause we try so many things and we don't even know where it comes from. And then we try to find some kind of a solution. And so now from my perspective as a healer, and as a family constellation therapist, when I now look back at my life, it, it's so clear to me where that stuff came from. Okay. Um, and in order to explain it, we have to go a little bit into how family systems work, because most of us know that most of our issues come from our family, how we do love, how we do money, how we do life, how we feel about ourselves. They're strongly influenced by our upbringing. And so I have a lot of war trauma in my family system. My dad is a veteran. My grandparents were refugees in World War II. There's so much war and so much destruction in my family system. And mm -hmm. something that not many people know is that that unhealed trauma gets passed down from generation to generation. And it actually causes nervous systems to work differently. So it really felt like I was born so sensitive, so high strung, always at the edge, on my edge, it's only until, you know, maybe the past couple of years that I've worked as a healer was when I, my anxiety went away. And now I hardly ever have anxiety anymore. But until that point, I was always anxious. And I, so part of it is my family system, you know, all the unhealed trauma from my family. And then in addition to that, I was born into a pretty abusive family, emotionally, physically abusive. I experienced sexual abuse when I was seven for the first time. So even just the experiences I had when I was a child um, were not ideal to say the least. And so my body reacted in, in a very fascinating way. So I got really numb. And at the same time, I got, like, I had an anxiety disorder that caused me to be triggered by certain words and by certain sounds. I still have it to this day. Sometimes when I hear fireworks over and over again, like, I get an attack, and it's not what people think an anxiety attack usually looks like. For me, it was more like epilepsy, where I would lose control, and I would kind of hurt myself and wake up bleeding a couple hours later. So... I really, it was really, really intense for me. And part of it was my family trauma. Part of it was my personal trauma. The other part was also just that I didn't know how to digest all the life experiences that I've had. It just, instead of making it, making me stronger, I just kept getting more and more numb, more and more bitter. I was hardly even alive by the age of 14 when I started therapy. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you for so much for sharing that story. Um, what a journey you've been on of this healing. Yeah, so much. I, I Deep gratitude, respect. <laughs> um, and I, I understand why I asked the question now. Um, a lot of people don't understand, the, and I think the family constellations is so can be so powerful in that, that, we, that a lot of people don't understand how the family traumas and the pains and the sufferings that get passed down through family um, into, into our own DNA and our bodies and um, our energetic makeup and how we feel. And that a lot of, yeah, can you talk a little bit more about that? And, and yeah, I think that's so important for people to, to learn more about and understand. Yeah, it's so fascinating to me too. So when I first started studying family constellation therapy with my mentor, Natalie Berthold, she lives in New York City and she's amazing. She's still my mentor to this day. Um, I remember her telling me that a lot of my issues weren't even my own. And I asked her, what do you mean it's not my own? And she said, if you keep trying to fix an issue in your life over and over and over again, with your own personal willpower and all the tools like meditation and hypnosis and therapy and stuff, and you still can't fix it, it's probably a transgenerational thing. Mm. So your own life experiences that you've experienced in your life, whether that's losing a lot of money or making an unfortunate decision in terms of your career choice, or maybe you experienced heartbreak, 
all those things are your own stuff and you can work through your own stuff. However, if there are um, family patterns and family trauma that do not come from you, that come from previous generations, like other people's stuff that get downloaded into you, you can work as hard as you want to and it's never going to let you go. Mm-hmm. So now when I have clients, and many of my clients come to me as a last resort. Some of my clients are, have PhDs in psychiatry and they say, Hannah, I really need your help. And that's why family constellation therapy is so powerful because it looks not only at Um, your own trauma, but also at the transgenerational trauma. Mm. It explains why so many of us who live these luxurious lives, you know, when we look around, we have electricity, we have water, we have roofs over our heads, we have all these opportunities. And yet so many people in our younger generations are struggling with mental illness that our uh, grandparents and our great grandparents should have you know, or even the generations before that, you know, we are showing the signs of all the hardship our ancestors have been through because it just kind of gets passed down and down and down if somebody doesn't fully process it. Mm. This is also very scientific. If you're into science, if anybody listening wants to Google why that is and really look into what happens in the genetic makeup of a person, um, epigenetics is the thing to Google. So epigenetics is a part of biology. It explains that in detail. I love reading about it. It's so fascinating. I find it fascinating. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Sorry, just go ahead. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, I'm gushing about this too. It's Mm -hmm. it's so fascinating to me. And what I loved about it is that it helped me find a way out Mm -hmm. because I noticed in my own life and also with my clients that there were two, two camps of people. With one camp, you can do the whole hypnosis and intention setting and life coaching part. And then with the others like none of that stuff worked and it was so fascinating to me and that's because our family system affects us so much more than anything else like it's deeper than the subconscious mind it's deeper than willpower it's so deep it's actually in your tissues it's in your genetic code and that's because without our family we wouldn't even be alive Mm. so for me it was so interesting to finally see in the first place why I even had all these issues why I haven't been able to fix them, and then how I can predictably help people move out of it. I thought was just mind blowing. Yeah. Wow. I um, have you had any experience? Because my experience with that is because um, I'm adopted. So being raised uh, by my family, uh, who was nothing like me. You know, they, they were very. Um, very grounded, very, you know, level-headed, you know, like, but I was carrying, I realized at some point I was carrying the the pains and things from my birth mother that I didn't even know her. I'd never met her, but I was acting out and doing things like choosing the wrong men and, you know, getting into alcohol very young and my family didn't even drink, you know, so it was like all these patterns um, of things that I was doing and it took me it took me years to understand that it actually wasn't mine, that it actually had been passed down to me through my mother. And I was making the same decisions that she was making and, uh, healing that was, was huge. Um, I wish back then that they had had family constellations and they, and they didn't because how long has family constellations been really, um, around, do you know? Um, it was started by Bert Hellinger, who was a German missionary in South Africa, and he was living in South Africa in the 50s and 60s. Okay. From there, it got developed over the years, and I think it kind of started really being seen as an established healing modality in the 80s. Okay. It's really big in the Netherlands and in Germany and then Argentina and Chile. Um, it's still such a baby in the U.S. So Mm -hmm. I work worldwide, but my American clients usually have never heard of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, one of my missions is to just help more people understand that that healing modality is available. I feel the same way as you. When I first discovered it, I was like, oh my God, we all know how important family is. And yet this way to fix it is Mm -hmm. just not accessible yet. Yeah. And I I think there's still many people that are coming to understand epigenetics, you know, like coming to understand that it does get passed down through family lineage, through our generations. Um, 
Yeah. Do you ever find that um, with, I don't know, do you work with many people that are adopted? I have a handful of clients who are adopted. Do you find that they could also carry things from their adoptive family that maybe gets, or is it usually just like throughout their bloodline? That's such a good question. So, okay. I think I want to backtrack a little bit to really okay. explain what happens. So a soul gets born into a family system. You can think about a family system like a constellation of stars. Mm. And the people closest to the child affect the child the most. This would be the biological parents. From there, it would be the grandparents and the siblings, aunts and uncles. For somebody who is taken out of that family system, and placed into another, that person energetically has two family systems. Mm -hmm. Whenever I do constellations with my adoptive, with my adopted um, clients, we always work with two sets of parents. Mm -hmm. And I love that you shared your story so beautifully because it's a really amazing example of how important the bond to the biological parents is. Mm -hmm. You might say, my adoptive parents helped me stay alive. And that's so beautiful. But in a way, your biological parents gave you life. Mm -hmm. So both sets of parents are indebted to each other. One gave you life and the other set of parents helped you stay alive. So when I do healings, a big conversation that we have between the two pairs of parents is that they need to be in gratitude to each other. Mm -hmm. And also something that happens a lot with my adoptive clients is that they reject their biological parents and they say, I don't want to be like my mom. She was a drug addict or she gave me away. And then the more we reject a parent, the more we follow them. Mm. So then my clients has my clients choose to have abortions at the same age that their mom gave them up for adoption. Or they go into the same um, you know, drug stuff. And it's not conscious, it's just something like when you reject a parent, you follow them so closely. So one of the best things that can be done is to bring an adopted child back into a healthy relationship with their biological parents. And this can be done energetically, you know, because many of us just, we just don't know. Yeah. You know we, we can't be in contact with every single family member, but it can still be done energetically. So you have an energetic connection, healthy relationship to your biological parents from there, you don't have to follow them so blindly anymore. And it really sounds like that's what happened for you. So you were able to release those behaviors. Yes. Say that's what happened. Yes. Yeah. That's what happened. Um, yeah. And then I also, because my line of work is, it's different than yours. Um, but it's, it works with the, the woundings and the, yeah. Um, so what I found was also, then I also carried energy and needed to clear some things for my adoptive family line, especially for the women that I was holding for them, I guess, as a healer myself and as someone who, I don't know if it, if that's the reason it fell on me or if that's maybe just because I'm the one that's aware of it. Mm. People like you who are so sensitive and have a really big (laughs) heart, we oftentimes unconsciously volunteer when we are children Mm. to take on all the unprocessed stuff usually the people who are born first into a family system or the ones who kind of take on this role of savior where they're like, these parents have been running this family system. The pain stops here. I'm going to take on all the junk. (laughs) You know, like we feel like we're really strong. So we take it on, even though it's not ours to carry. Because when we carry other people's stuff, it makes them weaker, makes us weaker. So it's important to give it back. And yeah, to answer your question, it totally happens that people also take on patterns from their adoptive family in addition to their biological family. So you kind of have a double whammy there. And it's so important to give both patterns back. And I was the first. So I was the oldest. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So that makes sense. You are a perfect case study of how (laughs) family dynamics work. (laughs) I will have to try this family constellations (laughs) for sure. Um, so, yeah, so about families, can you, if someone wanted to do a family constellation, I'm guessing you do it online as well. You do online and in person? I do, yeah. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to put your links below because I think there's so many people who really could use um, 
this guidance and healing for that. Um, and as far as, cause I know that you mentioned that, um, you work with mainly women. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yes. And in business too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I do also, um, I do a lot of energy work on businesses as well. Mm -hmm. So just like, just like, so I'm very sensitive and I always have been, so I can kind of read and see energy. So when I look at a person, I, I kind of see what's going on. Even when somebody tells me about their family system, mm -hmm. I usually kind of see what's going on. Um, maybe sometimes I think it's just because I've been doing this for so long and I just, you get, I, maybe it's just practice. But the other thing is that I'm really very sensitive. Mm -hmm. And I also started noticing that similar, that all the family stuff is holding people back in their businesses. So sometimes when somebody comes to me and they'll say, I have like crazy patterns of my business. Like I just can't get clients or I get, and I get a client and then I lose a client or I'm like at this plateau and I can't get past it or, you know, whatever this is, it's like this poltergeist syndrome. If it's not working, <laughs> it's so fascinating because I can even go into a business and we can do the same thing that I would do in a family system where we look at what's out of alignment, what's blocked here and there. And then you can do kind of like a chiropractic alignment and the question I get a lot is that people say, why do we need to talk about family when it's about money or business? Mm -hmm. That family system so strongly influences how much money we're allowing ourselves to have and how much well-being we're allowing us to experience in our lives. It's a huge influence. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that, um, that you put those two together because I, I think that money is a huge issue. And women especially have these blocks around money. Not all, thank God, thank God. but um, really have these blocks around money and um, abundance and how that relates to the family. Can you give an example of like how this family constellation, like the, the problems in the family could affect the abundance that like we want to come in through our own business, through our business and how we are able to um, accept money? Mm -hmm. There are so many things that affect our ability to receive money in our businesses. One thing I always look at with a person is, did they feel loved and taken care of and safe and like overwhelmed with love when they were little? Mm -hmm. Because this is when we learn our capacity to receive love. Mm -hmm. In a way, money is an expression of love and well-being and safety. These are the feelings that we hope to receive from having a lot of money. Um, and so when somebody grows up and they never had that feeling, there's a contraction in the body. Mm. So, and this is what my clients actually do. Like they sleep completely cramped up in the fetal position. It's like their default state or shoulder is hunched over. Or when we do energy work together, they have, I see like black, just blocks of energy in their belly. And this is also usually where people hold a lot of, um, physical issues, like Mm -hmm. aches and pains and all that stuff. So it's really fascinating how when a child does not get the loving care that it needs, like that contraction happens. And when we contract, it's like we shut down all those channels through which money should flow. Like ideally there would be a strong flow of money and love and well-being and we would be able to let it in. But if you never experience that and it's completely unusual for you, then many people don't know how to seek it out or many people don't know how to let it in. That's so understandable. So that's one of the major things that I look at as a therapist, like what's their capacity for receiving love like mm. and what happened in their family system and in their past that caused them to shut it down. That is so important. Yes. Well, um, <clears throat> talking about being adopted. So mine was, sorry, excuse me. <coughs> My coffee has sugar in it. I'm not used to, milk. I'm not used to it. Um, part of being adopted, and I was premature as well. Uh, so part of that was scarcity, like not being like fighting, almost fighting for your life, having to be in an incubator for a little while, and that brought on a feeling of of scarcity and fight and fl fight or flight that I had to really overcome, you know, throughout my healing process and that affected my money. So I'm really glad you pointed that out and how 
being children and how, you know, like feeling unsafe or feeling like not taken care of really affects how we can accept that abundance in our life and how, you know, to feel that feeling of freedom and safety. Um, yes. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Cause I experienced the same thing. It took me a while to be able to accept money, to know, to, to allow that to even come in and to even know that that was affecting me. I'm sure that there's so many people who have no idea. And I know there are, I'm not even sure. Like I know there are, um, yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Cause there's such an abundant, there's so much abundance that we have available to us that we're just not open to receiving. I guess it's that love. Mm. Yeah. I love that you said that because adoption and being, having that break in the bond with mom when you were born, like Mm. those are two of the biggest breaks in the bond. Yes. Especially that contact, right? Yeah. It's that human contact. It's Mm. this idea that people shouldn't touch you. You're in this little machine. Mm. You're fragile. And that, feeling of fragility and of, I don't want people to touch me. Nothing should get close to me. I'm not letting anything in being mm-hmm. isolated, being alone. That usually it's being carried into the future. Mm-hmm. And it causes a lot of trouble. In addition to that, you were adopted. So, you know, I'm, I love that you're doing so well now, but I can imagine that it was pretty hard for you to get to where you are. There was some work. <laughs> it was definitely some work. There was a lot of a lot of heartache to get to where I am. Yeah. But thank goodness I, I love doing the work. <laughs> so yeah, it was. It, it was a process. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of a lot of tears and yeah. But well worth it. Well worth it. Mm. And it's interesting that I have a lot of I'm very open about my adoption. I'm very open about being adopted because somehow I, I have people around me that they, they, I guess, open up and come to tell me that they're adopted. And it's been my whole life. I've had people around me, other people who have been adopted. Um, so being able to be open about that and express my own experience and, and how, you know, I kind of, my own observance of, of others and myself and that um, the pain that adoptive children have that can't, it's not, it's not very well understood. You know, that feeling of not being worthy, of being abandoned, of, you know, the scarcity, not being taken care of, you know, like there's, there's so many different aspects to it um, that I don't think people realize. Mm-hmm. And those children, you know, they need, they need some different attention and some, some love and in certain ways. Yeah. So yeah, I'm really glad that people they do open up to me to tell me they're adopted. And, and I think that my experience and uh, my healing process has allowed me to, to kind of understand where they are. Like you, you know, your, your experiences and uh, your healing process has allowed you to be so sensitive to what other people are experiencing and and seeing those places within them that, um, within their family dynamics and everything you can pick up on that right away. You know, you're very sensitive to that yeah. and that makes you a wonderful healer. Thank you. And nothing shocks me anymore. Yeah. Right. I have clients who say, Oh my God, I have this thing. And then others think, Oh my God, I have that thing. And everyone who comes to me either says, I have the worst family system. I don't think you can fix this and you'll be so shocked. And then the other camp of people's, just completely downplay it. And they're like, I have no problems at all. But then their life, you know, but then they have anxiety and they can't find a mate and they like are in a job they hate. And I'm like, mm. it does sound like you do have some stuff there because otherwise your life would be working so much better. Mm. That's interesting. I feel like since I've, you know, hit rock bottom so many times over and over and over again, Mm-hmm. Nothing shocks me anymore. So whether we talk about, we talk about things like war trauma, we talk about incest, sexual mm-hmm. abuse, you know, addiction, all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. And it really gave me this backbone and this capacity to talk about all those things that we tend to not want to talk about, but mm-hmm. that are so necessary. Because in a way, meditating and practicing yoga and going to spiritual retreats, like, it is a little bit of a cop-out from a family consultation therapy perspective when you expect that to 
heal those issues that are so much deeper. Yeah. Like you can't meditate a way that you reject your mom or you can't mm-hmm. meditate a way that you were, you know, molested by your grandfather. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, there are not enough safe places yet where we can go and explore those things mm-hmm. in a guided way that actually help us release it. And yeah. so instead we like run to all those other healing modalities because we don't know any better. So yeah, this is something that really strongly influenced my decision to run this business as opposed to be in fashion at the time. <laughs> I definitely understand that feeling. This is your calling for sure. This is your, yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. Um, and I'm really happy that you're doing this because the deep work is so important for us to be able to, like you said, you know, like have a life that, that is amazing. That's, that's filled with joy that, you know, is bright, you know, that we have to, we have to look at the deeper, the deeper underlying issues. Mm. Yeah, totally. I love it. It's worth it. Like you said, Mm, it is. (laughs) Yeah. And I I think, um, you know, there's, once you start, like there's no, it's really no going back, right? Once you understand how much better that you can feel, what opens up to you once you actually start doing that deeper work, the healing work. Yeah. It's, yeah. I also remember in the beginning of my business looking around and I was thinking, oh my God, there's so many life coaches. There's so many therapists in the world who am I to start this business? You know, am I even needed? Who even cares? Mm -hmm. And then I just like the calling was so strong and people kept coming. And like, I really did it so reluctantly. I was not into it for the first, I think two years, I was just sitting there with my pouty face and being like, I'm just going to do this a little bit just to prove to myself that I can't do it. And that it's (laughs) unnecessary. And then, you know, my business just kept on rolling and rolling and rolling kind of like it took a, it took a life on its own. And at some point I kind of had this insight of, Oh my God, we're doing so much healing, but we never get to the actual stuff. Mm. So of course there's people in therapy for 20 years and still struggling. And I set the intention for myself that I wanted my work to be something that people do and then they're done with it. You know, it takes a different time frame for every person, of course, but I wanted it to be something that somebody does, you know, once, like somebody heals their family system once or they learn how to work with their energy once and from there they can go live. So healing does not become this lifestyle, like this culture that people are in Because I kind of feel like the point of healing is to feel good so you can go live and enjoy yourself, right? Mm, Yeah. And so that's an insight that I have that just really opened up my eyes. And from there, I noticed that that I just wasn't running my business for me. I just didn't do it for me. Like my business started because of other people and I'm running my business for other people. It has nothing to do with me. Yeah. The service. Mm-hmm. that's why it's, take, it's taken off and taken a life of its own. You're doing it from a place of love and for others. Oh, it makes so much sense. It's such an honor. It's mm-hmm. just a privilege to me. Every day that I get to, you know, I basically sit around all day long and I get to make people happy. It's such an honor. Like it's such, such, such an honor. You're so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Like, it's just been such a pleasure to speak with you. Um, Yeah. Is there anything that you would like to share with, like, to go a little bit deeper on or to share with um, everyone today? Is there anything that comes to mind? Let me see. So... I have this very strong belief that people's family systems choose the time when they need healing. Mm -hmm. So I I would even say in 100% of the cases when people come to my work, they say, I can't not do this with you. Like it's this extremely strong pull. And I always Mm -hmm. think, well, yeah, because your family system says they want to heal. So 
this entire work that we do when we bring your family system into alignment, we clear out all this trauma that's living in your own body and also in your family system, all those patterns and beliefs and all this heavy junk that just makes people feel so clogged up and heavy and stopped. Mm. But when you clear this stuff out, there's like this ripple effect that goes through your family system and everybody gets a healing. So it's not uncommon um, for something to happen that might feel like a miracle. For example, I recently got a message from my half sister. I didn't even know I had a half sister. All of a sudden I had an extra half sister or my mom's behavior completely changed towards me. We were, mm-hmm. we didn't speak for a couple of years and then all of a sudden everything was so different. So everybody in the family gets a healing as well and actual relationships change in mm-hmm. very tangible ways. And that's something I think is so fascinating. So for anybody listening who's like, do I need family consolation therapy? I always feel like people's family systems lead them to healers and lead them to family consolation therapy um, podcast episodes or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it also goes beyond, do we need a healing to, does my family system really need a healing? Do we want to keep passing down all those things or is it time for the pain to truly stop for us to fix those patterns, get everything back into alignment so that the next generations can have a much easier time? Hmm. That's how I felt when I first discovered it. I was like, I know I really need this. Everybody could probably use some family healing. And I also really knew that I wanted to do it for my family system and for the generations to come. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad you pointed that out because it, <clears throat> it's, it's healing forward and backwards, right? Like, yeah. 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 Thank you. Sorry. I'm just like <laughs> going into that in my mind. Uh, yeah. And um, I'm going to post below how everyone can contact you. And um, anything, any information that you have on uh, websites and I'll just make sure everybody has that because, uh, yes, if you're feeling called for doing this um, healing work for your family, for your children, for yourself, then um, I can, I can tell you that, you know, sitting in front of Hannah, like I would definitely connect with her. Um, So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that we connected. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you have any last words for everyone? Do you have any? Yeah. Um, um, I'm just, I love getting emails. If anybody wants to reach out, say hi, ask questions, tell me what you liked about the episode. Don't hesitate to email me. I answer all my emails um, personally. If you want to email me, you can email me at hannah uh, at hello at hannahbeer.com. This is hello at H-A-N-N-A-B-I-E-R.com. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us for The Art of Love. And I look forward to connecting with you again next Wednesday. May we go out into the rest of this week embodying more love, love for ourselves, love for others, and love for Pashamama, Mother Earth. So love to each and every one of you, and see you next week.